All right, let's look at this example here. Adrian bought a, an eight-foot dog leash for her dog, <clears throat> and she wants to figure out uh, the distance the dog runs when it runs one circle with the leash fully extended, as you can see in the picture. So with the leash fully extended, the dog is following along uh, this path, and it will cover some amount of distance. Well, just to specify, uh, circumference is a form of distance, which is why in the last lesson you can see that you're usually dealing with some form of distance, like feet or uh, meters or inches or some form of uh, measurement. Okay, uh, area is a form of measurement, but it covers a space. All right, so uh, for example, we would want to know in the area of this circle a, how much uh, space, for example, does this circle cover. But that's not really what we're looking for here. What we really want to know is how much distance is covered by the dog in this uh, in this circle here. So. Uh, yes, she definitely wants to find, in this case, the circumference. So on number two here, it's going to talk about how much running room the dog has with the leash fully extended. Well, again, that's going, we're going to need to look at the circle there. So let's look at the circle. And it wants to know how much room does the dog have. So again, it has to do with space. And in this case, since it is with space, she is going to want to find the area. Because in this case, she wants to know, well, if the dog were sitting here, then that's fine. Uh, but it certainly couldn't sit over here, so that's a matter of space. Whereas, if, it wants, if she wants to know specifically with the leash fully extended, the distance, then it's got to be along. The dog will only be along one of these points. In space, the dog can be along any of those points, but it can also be within the perimeter of this circle, or in this case, the circumference. Now, to describe a real-world situation that would involve finding the area of a circle, well, uh, in this case, sure, she could figure out how much space the dog has with the leash fully extended. Uh, in some cases, uh, some people want to find the area of a room. Maybe it's circular. Um, I believe in the White House there's an oval office. Again, that's not circular, but uh, if it was a circle, then you would need to find the area. Um, but there are many applications of real-world situation where you need the area of a circle. <clears throat> and I believe we've covered one of them. And this one is one of my favorites, is with pizzas. Pizzas are generally circular in nature. And if you figure out the area of a pizza... You can figure out its cost per square inch and then figure out the best priced pizza. A uh, real world situation for finding the circumference of a circle, number four, uh, would be maybe the uh, size of a ring, some type of jewelry, because you don't want it too big, you don't want it too small. Um, yeah, maybe it's some type of... Uh, running distance. So if you want to run a mile, you need a uh, circle that will accommodate your needs. Alright, so this slide is going to show us why specifically we need the radius, like we talked about in the last lesson. Uh, with circumference, it's better to use radius to get in the habit of using radius than it is diameter. Of course, it's going to give us diameter in this lesson, but it just means that we still will need to find the radius, okay? You can see in here, in this formula, that the diameter doesn't appear anywhere, which means even if it does give us the diameter, we do need to figure out the radius. What's nice about this, finding the area of a circle, is once you find the radius, all you got to do is multiply it by itself, and then by pi, and you have the area of your circle. Just take the radius of any circle, multiply it by the same radius, or square it, as you can see in the formula, and then multiply it by pi, bam, you are done. 
So on this example, we can see, find the area of the circle. It's given us a radius. So you've got 2, which is the radius, times 2, times pi. And that gave us uh, about 12.6. And we do need the units in inches. Yeah, so let's not forget this. Uh, find the area of the circle. Since it's area, the inches, actually, they do need to be squared. So this is 12.6 inches squared. And the book has indicated that down here at the bottom by square inches. This example is going to work the same way. It tells us the radius is 14 centimeters. So we got 14 centimeters. You can square it. Or you can say it's just 14 times 14. Now multiply by pi. Doesn't matter which way you did it. And then figure out what that equals. Now I'm going to round my answer. I get uh, 615.8. And again, I do need my label in centimeters. Now this is area, actually. And I think uh, we'll need to cover that in the last one. But it's... It's area, which is two-dimensional, so it's actually centimeters squared. Because what happened is, if we look back at the radius, you took 14 centimeters times 14 centimeters. And using the commutative property of multiplication, we've got 14 times 14. And then you've also got centimeters times centimeters. And so if we look at just the centimeters... Anything multiplied by itself, you can just square it, so you'd have centimeters squared there, which is what we have. Let's go ahead and find the area of this circle with a radius of 3.2 centimeters. Alright, so this gives us... 3.2 times 3.2 times pi, so the radius times the radius times pi, which as it turns out is going to be 32.2 centimeters, but again this is area, which is two dimensional, so there's two dimensions there, centimeters and centimeters. Alright, this example gives us a diameter, which we don't want, we want radius. So since the diameter is 30 feet, we're just going to divide it by 2. So the radius in this case is 15 feet. Now that we have the radius, let's go ahead and multiply it by itself. So you've got 15 feet times 15 feet times pi, which equals 706.5. Nine, and this one showed in feet already as we can see so this is feet but it's area so it's two dimensional squared 706.9 feet squared now some of you are going to look at this answer that the book has and be a little worried because it's off by four tenths of a square foot and so the discrepancy between this just happened because we used pi and in the book, they used 3.14. And we've seen that before in the problems, but um, again, I'm using pi because I have a button for it, which makes it much easier. So this, again, is a worded example in the book. And all you really need to do is figure out where it tells you the diameter, in this case, and then find the radius, which would be 12 millimeters. You got 12 times 12 times pi, which gives you of 452.16. And of course, they've rounded it to 452.2 square millimeters. Now, you don't have to write square millimeters like the book does. You can write 452.2, and this is millimeters squared. It's the same thing. All right, a semicircle is when you just take a circle, like the one right here and all you're going to do is take a knife and cut it in half okay so when you do that now we can separate these and over here you would have 
this half circle and over here you'd have this half circle uh, which is just another fancy way of saying semi-circle so uh, semi-circle is just half a circle so when you want to find the area of a semi-circle all you're going to do is take the area of a the full circle as it were and then just cut it in half which is what this formula is showing the area for a full circle is pi times radius times radius which is this part and then multiplying it by one half we'll just cut that in half so let's look at this one this example it gives us a diameter because the line goes all the way through the diameter is 16 inches so the radius we know is 8 inches so let's find the area of the full circle you've got the area equals 8 times 8 times pi which is going to give us 201.1 this is inches squared but that's the area of the full circle what we want is the semicircle so in order to do this we're going to take this 201.1 we'll divide it by 2 and that will give us the area of the semicircle which is what we wanted in the first place which is 100.55 and if you want to round that, yeah, you can go ahead and just make that 100.6. Again, the, the units remain the same in inches squared because it is area. So it will be two-dimensional. All right, go ahead and try C. Okay, so it tells us the radius is 6. It is 6 centimeters, so we'll take 6 times 6 times pi, which will give us the area of the entire circle, and that is 113.097. Again, I'm just, the last few examples I rounded at first at this point, but in this case, I'm not going to. But since this is a semicircle, let's just divide this by 2 and see what we get. And we will need to label the final answer. It's two-dimensional, so it will be centimeters squared. And what we get is 56.5 centimeters squared. All right, so this is a word problem related to semicircles, as you can see. It tells us the radius is 6 feet. Well, we just found a, uh, the radius of a semicircle with a radius of 6, and we found it was 56.5, and now we're just going to change the units in this case to feet squared. The process is the same, so you, so you just take 6 times 6 times pi, you get that answer, I think it was 100. And yeah, 113.097 divided by 2. I round it to the tenth here. And you take that, you divide that by 2. So that's where this comes from.